Good morning. Good morning. We wish to welcome you all to worship on this, the third Sunday after Pentecost. We are in the green season, entering of growing, and to have special prayers and thoughts of our farmers as we hear Jesus um, tell the parable of um, the faith of a mustard seed that does great things. So that's just a little bit of uh, a primer for our service for today. Uh, we've had a busy week, um, and I want to share just some announcements of that. We had a wonderful VBS program, as you may have seen on Facebook. Um, over 100 kids, 40 um, volunteers at One in Christ, um, kids that were just empowered, and they came here and sang their hearts out on Thursday. And so we are blessed by that. Um, their service project was um, to collect money for Feed My Starving Children. And throughout the week, they brought in their offerings and, and uh, raised $587.05 um, for a food pack. Um, and then we don't know what the um, amount was collected at the closing program, but with that and then our noisy offering um, um, contributions, we're well on our way to be able to sponsor again a Living Waters food pack, I think this fall. So that's a wonderful opportunity. Um, the money that the kids raised will feed six kids or one and a half families for a full year. And so um, we're really grateful for um, that opportunity to serve and for our kids to learn that lesson and hopefully participate in a food pack this fall. Um, yesterday, um, Shannon Bruins, Sandra and I were in the library um, uh, for our online synod assembly. It was... Um, new to us, um, some celebrations, some glitches, um, a little bit of drama, as anything of, of people gathering can be. Um, but we elected a new bishop. It is Kevin Jones on the fifth ballot. Am I right? Um, on the fifth ballot. And so um, he will be installed as our new bishop-elect um, September 25th at Trinity in Mason City. And so we look forward to that and include... Um, our synod and, and our bishop-elect in our prayers um, today. Also, we remember in our prayers um, um, Ruth, our organist, who uh, provides such wonderful music day in and or Sunday in and week in and week out. Yes, yes. Um, there was a petition there to remind ourselves of our, our musicians, our organist, um, our children who sing, and so we want to lift that up. And as a tribute to that, um, we will be singing our closing hymn um, is dedicated kind of to Ruth, in, when in our music, God is glorified. So we have that. Um, Shannon Bruins, our president, um, has been working um, diligently as well. She met with the COVID management team. Um, she was here at Synod Assembly and, um, and helped tape the Saturday evening service and then rushed off this morning to um, go on vacation and be with her family. Um, she does have a letter here um, that she would like me to read about our, um, our, our movement towards um, a more freer understanding of the pandemic is over and, and we're open for um, business and doing all the activities that um, we have enjoyed in the past. So this is um, from our Council President, Shannon Bruins. Good morning. Um, it's a pleasure to be with us today. COVID-19 management team met recently to review COVID guidelines put in place several months ago, which were intended to protect the health and safety of our members during the pandemic. The team considered changes to CDC guidelines, the continued decrease in COVID cases in our area, which may also reflect the increase in COVID vaccinations, and also changes to Iowa legislation regarding face coverings. The team sampled from several area churches um, to gauge how the overall worship community was changing based on these considerations. Additionally, the team recognized that worship attendance and participation must be given time to adjust to relaxed guidelines. So here, here are the guidelines. After review, the following changes were recommended and approved by Council on Thursday, June 10th. Wearing of masks is optional. Uh, we are discontinuing registration um, at the beginning of the um, service. We'll remove the number of restrictions for services, including worship, funerals, and weddings. Um, so there is um, no cap on who can attend. The north entrance will again be open, so you can go in and out the side door. Um, sharing the peace according to the safety and comfort level of all. 
which means um, we can share the peace with one another as, as one another feels comfortable. Um, so recognize that there are still people who are feeling uh, more that they, we need to be in some kind of bubble. So um, be, feel free to share the peace and recognize for those of us who are gathered, um, we're not all in the same place there. Um, there's always the opportunity during the week to call, text, or um, visit with people um, to share the ongoing peace of Christ with them um, as well. Coffee a Fellowship will, co will continue and commence again on Sunday, June 20th. That's next week in the Fellowship Hall uh, following worship. There is a sign-up sheet in the back to begin um, sponsoring those um, opportunities for fellowship downstairs, and we thank the Moans um, for kicking it off next Sunday. Um, but they're not going to do it every Sunday, so um, <laughs> once you've been well-fellowshipped and had a good role, um, you're on duty. You're in the ball pen. For the interim, worship um, offering will be continued to be collected in the back of the sanctuary. Uh, communion distribution will remain the same, um, with masks being worn by pastors and others who are um, assisting with distribution. Um, these parts of the service will be reevaluated re at a future date. Salem Council members sincerely thank everyone for the care and understanding these past months as we have, have had to navigate the unknown during the pandemic. God has blessed us in ways that continue to be revealed to us. Uh, with thanks and gratitude, Sharon Bruins, Council President. So, the other thing she didn't share, but we talked on Saturday, I get to um, close the hymn singing in a procession um, and sing with all of you in the pews and um, do the um, um, sending from there and then be available um, to greet you all and spend time with you in the um, narthex. So these are indeed good things. Those, I think, are all the announcements. Oh, I do want to recognize, we give thanks for the radio broadcast um, that is being heard, our rebroadcast of the Saturday service um, by the uh, Brackey family um, in memory, in loving memory of Sharon Brackey. So with that, let's prepare our hearts and minds for worship and join in our call to worship and praise. We come to hear God's call. Life, Life is, is a mystery. mystery. We are surprised by what we hear. We walk, we walk by, by faith. faith. Sorry. We are invited to be part of God's new creation. Life, Life is, is a mystery. mystery. We, walk we walk by, by faith. faith. Praise the one who gives us faith. Praise God. Praise the one who walks with us. Praise, Praise God. God. Praise the one who shrouds life in mystery. Praise God. I invite you to stand. Praise the one true love in God. 
joy and gladness, seeing what our God has done. Praise the one. Let us pray. O oh God, you are the tree of life, offering shelter to all the world. Graft us into yourself and nurture our growth, that we may bear your truth and love to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. First reading is from Ezekiel chapter 17, verses 22 through 24. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will take a sprig from the lofty top of a cedar. I will set it out. I will break off a tender one from the topmost of its young twigs. I myself will plant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the mountain height of Israel I will plant it, in order that it may produce bows and bear fruit and become a noble cedar. Under it, every kind of bird will live. In the shade of its branches will nest wings cre or winged creatures of every kind. All the trees of the field shall know that I am the Lord. I bring low the high tree. I make, the high, I make high the low tree. I dry up the green tree and make the dry tree flourish. I, the Lord, have spoken. I will accomplish it. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Jesus. 
The second reading is from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 6 through 10 and 14 through 17. So we are always confident, even though we know that while <clears throat> we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we do have confidence, and we'd rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please him. For all of us must appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive recompense for what has been done in the body, whether good or evil. For the love of Christ urges us on, because we are convinced that one has died for all, therefore all have died. And he died for all, so that those who live might live no longer for themselves, but for him who died and was raised for them. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view. Even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Brian. say it warms my heart to hear all your voices um, here now with the liturgical choir. It's, uh, it's a wonderful thing to be gathering for worship and singing together again, hearing the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. Jesus said, the kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise day and night and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself, first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe at once, he goes in with his sickle because the harvest has come. He also said, with what can I compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed which when sown upon the ground is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air may make nests in its shade. With many such parables, Jesus spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you make the soil fertile, the sun to shine, the rains to fall, the seeds to sprout and grow. So we pray for our farmers. As seeds this year were planted, there was frost just as tender shoots were springing up. And now those crops need rain. Give these crops favorable weather and good growing conditions. May our farmers have patience, find joy and hope in the watching and waiting and tending the fields. May we all continue to pray and support them in their work. May the work of our farmers this spring produce an abundant harvest. We pray this in the one who gives us and all things life, 
Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We can learn some good lessons from farmers about hard work and faithfulness. I know many a seasoned farmer who says you can take the bad with the good. Like the parable we heard this evening or this morning, you scatter the seed on the ground, you put in the crops, but like we hear in the parable, the earth itself produces first the stock and then the head and then the full grain in the head. You know not how. And if it all goes well, the grain is ripe and you bring in the harvest. If the yield is good, you give thanks. And if not, well, you know how to get by and hope that things will continue to get better. Farmers know it's about scattering seed year after year, being a faithful steward of what we have, pray for good weather, and place it all in God's hands. So when Jesus wanted to tell a story about patience and faithfulness, taking risks, working hard and trusting God, he chose a story about what farmers do, planting seeds. And I understand why. I have three good colleagues who were farmers before they were pastors. And you know what they say? I overheard this conversation just this week. You can take a person off the farm, but you can't take the farm out of the person. That way of life just is in their blood. And the way they live out their life is kind of a model for living out the life of faith as well, because it takes a lot of faith to be a farmer. My good friend Mark is now a retired from the farm and the pulpit. But after he sold his second farm and retired from the pulpit, he bought a place and put up a pole shed. And now he tinkers with old farm tractors and rebuilds them and they raise chickens and occasionally checks in on Nancy and I. And he says he continues to pray for us and our ministry at Salem. And I know this is true. I know he means it. We met Mark and Nancy when Nancy and I were going to a Call to Do What seminar at Wartburg Seminary 25 years ago as I was discerning my call to ministry and Mark, the farmer, was doing the same. And on our drive home, Back to Fargo, we thought, boy, they were a nice couple. It'd be really fun to get to know them. And sure enough, we both did end up at Wartburg Seminary that fall and have been wonderful friends for all these years. We will be staying with them for a couple of nights as we head out to see our son and daughter-in-law in a couple of weeks, just to check in with each other and celebrate farming, our lives, the church. He called me, or tech, yes, he called me on Friday and said, well, have you been vetted for bishop? And I said, Mark, don't even go there. Mark was on the election of ballot for North Illinois about three years ago. And we give thanks for those who step up to the plate and are willing to be bishops, um, but that's another story. I remember when it was Mark's turn to preach at a Friday chapel at seminary, and he was given a text from the book of James. Now, Dr. Martin Luther did not like the book of James. He thought it was too heavy laden with law and not enough gospel. And if it were up to him, it's been said, he would have taken it out of the New Testament. Luther called the book the Epistle of Straw. So what would Brother Mark have to say about this reading from James? Being the farmer that he was, Mark argued that although it might be true that the book of James is not the place where a new inquiring mind would get to know the grace of God through the love of Jesus Christ, James does have some merit and say something about living out our identity as Christ's Ambassadors as Christ's disciples, saved solely by grace through faith. 
The question is, well, what then? So you know I'm a farmer, Mark began his homily, and I have spent a good deal of time around farm animals. I love them, and God loves them, but they can make a really stinky mess of things. So I find straw to be an invaluable source to help deal with all that crap. He was a farmer. He said things just like it was. His message was simple. If you want to know about grace, read the gospel. If you want to know how to live out your life as a Christian, the epistle of James can be a helpful guide. And so from James chapter 2, verse 14, what good is it, my brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith but do not have works? Can faith save you? If a brother or sister is naked and lacks daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm, and eat your fill, and yet you do not supply their bodily needs, what is the good of that? So faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. Well, if that's what Luther refers to as straw, then so be it. But if you are serious about cleaning things up and making things better, well, then you need this epistle of straw to make the world a better place. Just another quick anecdote. When the God incarnate was born into this world and he had no place to lay his head, where did he find himself? In a manger lined with straw. Straw is the stuff that cleans up our messes and cradles the newborn Christ, the gospel, Brother Mark would remind us. So my farmer friends have become pastors. They have a way of looking at the world from this unique perspective. You might say a very grounded, earthy perspective. And if you were to ask them what seeds were planted in them, that caused them to leave the farm and step into the pulpit? Well, those can be some pretty interesting conversations. I've heard these call stories, and they would most likely sound familiar to many of you. They say something like this, I grew up in a farming community, and tending the farm, and going to church tending to faith. It's what life was all about. I had that pastor or a Sunday school teacher or a mentor in the congregation, a prayer pal, someone who has been my partner since baptism. They planted those seeds. They did not know if they would grow. They just kept planting. And some of them sprouted in me. We can have those stories as well as pastors. So what seeds have you planted? And what seeds have been planted in you? Take some time to think about those people who planted a seed the size of maybe just a mustard seed, just, a, just enough. This year, we again had the joy of participating with VBS, with One in Christ, sharing the gospel and planting seeds in over 100 preschool and elementary age youth. This year, the theme was treasured. You are treasured. Each day, there was a Bible verse or a story or a craft or a game or a song, even a snack that emphasized the daily theme. So one day, day one, we learned, God knows you. And the kids would say, you are treasured. We are treasured. Day two, God hears you. We are treasured. And then God comforts you. We are treasured. God chooses you. We are treasured. And I heard that so many times in the last four days. It just stuck in my brain because it was so loud when I heard it. 
And I have to be honest, spending three hours each day for four days with 100 loud, hot, overheated preschool and elementary youth, I was at some times challenged to see in each and every one of those kids, is that one really treasured? Known, heard, comforted, and chosen? Yes. These diverse, beautiful children of God, they were all chosen. They are all treasured. God treasures each and every one of them, even when we don't. That was a new seed planted in me this week. We are called to bloom and grow where we are planted. And this week it was at VBS. As God's beloved, we are called to sow seed. How it sprouts and grows, we do not know how. So again, what seeds have been planted in you? And what seeds are you planting? You are known, heard, comforted, and chosen because God treasures you. And if you were to take some time, I bet you could think of the ones who sowed that seed of faith in you. So I think this VBS lesson, lesson is too good not to share with people of all ages, social statuses, genders and gender identities and political affiliations. It just doesn't matter because God hears you and chooses you and comforts you. You are treasured. All God's people are treasured. You, we may not think it matters, but Jesus does. You see, in our parable today, the field Jesus imagines is big. It's diverse. It's inclusive. It's just not a little kingdom of our own, little fiefdom, where we can run and hide from all the world it's not just our congregation or our denomination or our national expression. It's seeds all planted all over the world for the kingdom of God. If God continues to sow seeds, if the Holy Spirit continues to provide the growth, well, then we are going to be okay. All we have to do is to believe that we are known and cared for and heard and comforted and treasured and plant that seed in our neighbors. When that seed is sown and grows, it becomes a place that puts forth, sends out branches where all can find a place to nestle and find shade. And so we scatter we branch out as we are able, and we sleep and rise day and night, and what is produced we cannot know, but God does. But know that your work matters, because you matter. So keep scattering seeds so that all may know that they are treasured, that they are heard, that they are comforted, and they are known. Amen.
our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us come before the triune God in prayer. You may be seated. Holy God, you plant the seeds of faith in every nation. Enliven your church so that the good news of your grace may root and grow throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy. Creator, even the trees, shrubs, and flowers delight in your goodness. From the depths of the soil to the highest mountain, bring forth new plants. Restore growth to places suffering drought. Lord, in your mercy. Judge of nations, we pray for our leaders and those in power. Grant them the ability to regard those under their charge with humility, dedicating their lives in service to others. Lord, in your mercy. Divine Comforter, you show compassion to those in need and provide relief to those who call on you. Bless all who suffer especially people trapped in cycles of poverty and homelessness. Lord, in your mercy. Sovereign God, this house of worship belongs to you. We give thanks and pray for our church musicians, especially Ruth, our organist. We dedicate to you the joyful noise that comes from this place, the cries of the children, the melodies and voice of instruments, and the songs from our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Eternal God, we give you thanks for our ancestors in faith who are now at home with you. We look forward to the day when we are reunited in your creation. Lord, in your mercy. We continue to pray weekly for five of our members of our church family. This week, we pray for Molly Andrusik. Caleb Angel, Dwight Angel, McKinley Arnold, and TJ Ashley. Let them know that they are heard and comforted and loved and chosen as well. That in the midst of all the summer activities, our families can know you watch over them, and provide for them, offer them your unconditional grace and mercy. Help us remain connected as a church family to your care and nurture as we strive to be more faithful. Lord, in your mercy. We give thanks this day for our Northeastern Iowa Synod who met in assembly yesterday to elect a new bishop. We give thanks for retired Bishop Stephen Ulsted and his 28 years of shepherding our synod, for the staff that finds pastors to serve, encourages those 
who are discerning their call to seminary, support outdoor ministries, Lutheran social services, companion synods, and help us to do the work of the church. For the faithful candidates who offered to be a part of the Holy Spirit's work, as votes are were cast to call a new leader to this new expression of always a reforming church. Finally, for our new bishop-elect, Kevin Jones, as he prepares in the coming months to be our bishop. Guide him and let him know as well that he has been now chosen. Lord, in your mercy. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. So the first time we share the peace, we may do it a little cautiously, and that's okay. Um, but the peace of Christ be with you all. We share that peace with one another. Thank you for reading. God's peace. Hey, God's peace. We have an opportunity to listen to our musical offering as we prepare. And peace to all those who are watching live stream and will catch up with us later. Um, may you also know that the peace of Christ is with you as well. Let us pray. Bountiful God, you provide the seeds and fertile soil that offers a harvest of abundance. May these fruits be a worthy offering of the gifts you so graciously provide. Let them increase a harvest of plenty to all who suffer and want. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to stand for the blessing. The blessings of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. Amen.
Thanks be to God.